Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is MTA, that is mineral trioxide aggregate. So as we all know, the quest for new materials are never ending, especially in the field of uh, dental science. So various materials have been formulated, tested and standardized to obtain maximum benefit for good clinical performance. So one such material is MTA, so which was introduced by Dr. Mahmoud Tarabinejad in 1993 in California. So it was originally formulated to provide the physical properties, setting requirements and characteristics which is necessary for an ideal repair and medicament material. Okay, so it is mainly for the repair and medicament. So it has proven that MTA exhibits good sealing ability, excellent long-term prognosis, relative ease of manipulation, good biocompatibility and tissue regeneration. So in 1998, MTA has been approved by the US Food and Drug Administration that is FDA. So we have basically three powder ingredients in MTA. First one is Portland cement which is a very commonly used uh, Rotapex uh, filling material but it is one of the ingredient that is it constitute around 75 percentage then bismuth oxide to improve the radio opacity and gypsum 5 percentage okay so if we say chemical composition it consists of tricalcium silicate tricalcium aluminate tricalcium oxide silicate oxide and bismuth oxide so its composition is almost like portland cement but only the uh, additional thing is mainly the bismuth oxide to improve the uh, radio opacity so the particle sizes are smaller and uniform in size whereas the particle size of Portland cement uh, vary in size uh, but our MTA has more smaller and regular in size so we have basically two types of MTA the first one is uh, gray MTA and second one white MTA okay so GMTA or WMTA so the gray MTA uh, why that peculiar color gray is because of the ferrous oxide okay ferrous oxide gives that gray color so it contains tetra calcium alumino ferrate nothing but ferrous oxide which is responsible for this gray discoloration so it can cause discoloration of teeth so that uh, it is not uh, commonly used in anterior tooth and it has got larger particles and it is having uh, larger particles and longer setting time but good compressive strength whereas the white MTA the ferrous oxide is replaced by magnesium oxide okay so it has magnesium oxide so there is no problem of tooth discoloration it has got lesser particle size and uh, shorter setting time and similarly it has got lesser compressive strength next about the mixing mixing of MTA okay so it is commonly followed the 3 is to 1 pattern the MTA paste is obtained by mixing 3 parts of powder and 1 part of water okay so to get a putty like consistency okay we can mix it on a paper or even on a glass slab using a plastic or metal spatula then this mix is placed in the desired location and condensed lightly with moistened cotton pellet so that is about a mixing 
now let's see the properties of MTA so the first about compressive strength compressive strength so the compressive strength it takes an average three to four hours for the MTA material to completely solidify so it has shown that once it is set its compressive strength equal to IRM or super EBA but less than amalgam so this IRM and super EBA are restorative materials especially the uh, root end restorative material retrograde filling materials so the compressive strength is equal to IRM and super EBA but less than amalgam so the compressive strength of MTA within 24 hours of mixing was about 40 megapascal but it increases to 67.3 megapascal after 21 days okay this is 24 hours so this is a compressive strength okay so the gray MTA exhibited greater compressive strength than whiter MTA. Now the pH. So the second property is pH. The initial pH is 10.2. It's very alkaline pH. Again it goes to 12.5 after 3 hours. Okay, that is the second property. Third property is radio opacity radio opacity it is actually less radio opaque than IRM and super EBA amalgam or gutta percha and it has similar radio density as zinc oxide eugenol okay its radio density is similar to zinc oxide eugenol but lesser than the other materials so the mean radio opacity of MTA is 7.17 millimeter of equivalent thickness of aluminium which is sufficient to make it easy to visualize radiographically the next property is solubility okay this fourth property is solubility so the MTA shows uh, basically no sign of solubility and the solubility might increase if we add more water during the mixing so the set MTA when exposed to water release uh, water so it releases calcium hydroxide which might be responsible for its cementogenesis property so that is solubility the next thing is marginal adaptation marginal adaptation and sealing ability so it seals well so MTA expands during setting which may be the reason for its excellent sealing ability so its thickness of about 4 mm is sufficient to provide a good uh, sealing sealing of the root apex okay so it has also got uh, antibacterial and anti fungal properties so it is basically works against uh, bacteria groups such as enterococcus fecalis streptococcus sanguis pseudomonas and e coli candida albicans staphylococcus epidermis all these bacteria will be destroyed so the seventh property is biocompatibility so it is very biocompatible and it is not mutagenic and is much less cytotoxic compared to super EB and IRM so this supports the superiority of MTA over formocasole as a pulpotomy medicament okay so that is a biocompatibility and next property is reaction with other uh, 
other dental material other dental material so mta does not react or interfere with any other restorative material gic or composite resin which use a permanent filling material do not affect the setting of mta when placed over it okay so the possible interactions might occur when mta cement is combined with the other materials during endodontic treatment that is a uh, chlorhexidine it might cause difficulties for correct setting sodium hypochlorite might cause a shorter time of setting saline might cause a longer time of setting lignokine again longer time of setting and the next property is tissue regeneration tissue regeneration tissue regeneration is this mta is capable of activation of cementoblasts and production of cementum so it consistently allows for overgrowth of cementum and also facilitates regeneration of periodontal ligament and it allows bone healing and eliminates clinical symptoms in many cases so the last one we have is the mineralization the 10th property is mineralization so just like calcium hydroxide it induces dentine bridge formation okay that is the most important one dentine bridge formation so the hard tissue bridge deposited next to mta it is mainly because of the sealing property biocompatibility alkalinity and other properties associated with this material so the dentine bridge that is formed with mta is faster with good structural integrity and more complete than the when compared to the calcium hydroxide okay so it proves to be a better at stimulating reparative dentin formation so it uh, resulting in less inflammation hyperemia necrosis as well as a good uh, thicker dentinal bridge with more frequent odontoblastic layer formation so when we compare with calcium hydroxide so the first property is hard tissue formation hard tissue formation is not very much in calcium hydroxide uh, but mta gives root and induction okay root and induction then the calcified bridge so it is continuous with dentine and it is very fast it is not continuous not continuous and it is slow the biocompatibility is high biocompatibility high here calcium hydroxide it is low degree of inflammation it is high it is low here inflammation then the setting setting is not very hard but it is hard here then the ph is both having high ph it is alkaline ph solubility solubility is a better property mta is highly insoluble but uh, this is partially soluble calcium hydroxide is partially soluble permeability it is non permeable whereas uh, the calcium hydroxide is permeable to fluids then resorption uh, mta is non resorbable okay non resorbable but here it is uh, it uh, increases the rate varies with density apical closure is very good with mta but uh, unpredictable with calcium hydroxide so the basic clinical uh, application of mta are as we all know it is mainly used as a root and filling material apical closure so mainly direct pulp capping then pulpotomy 
perfusion treatment then root perforation then uh, the obturation that is retrograde obturation then apexogenesis and apexification and also radicular resorption cases so all these cases are mainly the root repair material so that's all about mta mineral trioxide aggregate so we learned about the properties its application its uh, setting and little bit about its uh, composition and introduction so this is very commonly asked short note in uh, conservative industry hope you understood the small concept of mta i'll come up with a new topic in conservative industry thank you